Hi guys, it's Rachel, welcome back to my channel. I'm gonna do my January favourites today and I know that we're already a quarter of the way through February but last week was a, my birthday week and I was busy but then when I wasn't busy I felt like I was entitled to procrastinate. So I'm doing it today, yes. I'm gonna start off with two lip colours that I've been really enjoying. Um, the first one is LA Splash Liquid Lipstick in Katrina. And this one is one of their Studio Shine Lip Lusters and it's a duochrome. It's pretty amazing. It hasn't dried yet, but it is a reddy brown with a green shift, very much like Urban Decay Lounge or MAC Club or Blue Brown Pigment. It's amazing to see that in a liquid lipstick form. I really like it. And the other one that I was really loving last month was Urban Decay Venom. Looks like this. It's a bit, it always comes out a bit lighter than you expect it to and it is a deep purpley berry shade. I love it. And I normally wear that with MAC Cranberry Liner or something really similar. My favourite foundation last month was MAC Face and Body. I have it in C1 but I think I need N1. But I can make it work. I've been really enjoying this. I'm not particularly sure why. I normally wear it more in the summer. Um, but last month I was really enjoying it. Um, this one lasts really well on my oily skin. Um, it doesn't break up around my nose and chin like most foundations do. I have some favourite brushes from last month. The first one is the Zoeva Luxe Soft Definer. I have two for me and I have one in my kit as well. I really like these. They are pinched on one side, wider on the other side and they are great for blending. My other favourite brush was um, I'm not sure the name of it exactly, but it's this little kabuki brush from Hourglass, and it goes eek, in its little case, so I would say it's great for travelling, I don't travel and I never need to reapply my foundation during the day, but it is a neat little package and it's really great, um, the brush is so dense, really really dense, very little give in it. Um, very soft um, because it's so dense you'd expect it to be streaky but it's not and I like that it is rounded um, I do have flat top kabukis but I think they are slightly more streaky than the rounded ones I have some Kiko loves to show you from the last month the first one is the Kiko what's it called wet dry long lasting wet and dry use eyeshadow and this is in 200 gold I had seen these around, but I never actually tried Kiko until I saw Dominique LDI use it and then I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to try it. I think she uses this one as a highlighter, but it's um, deeper than my skin tone, so if I use it as a highlighter it looks quite obvious, but on my eyes it's amazing. Um, it's by the... And that's just a dry swatch. It's amazing wet, but I'm not going to show you that because I haven't got anything wet with me. And then I have two of their cream crushes to show you. I have a few more, but these are my two favourite at the moment. The first one is 05, and it is amazing, especially if you want another shimmer to look more impressive. Layering it over this one is great. It's got quite chunky, sparkly particles in it. I wouldn't say they're glittery, although maybe they are, um, but it's really high shine so I love it for the inner corner and all over the lid, um, especially if I want to make another one look just a bit more impressive. Um, so yeah, that was 05 and then I have 11 to show you, which is an iridescent pink, very pale pink and I can use this one as a highlighter. Uh, where should I put your... This one's going to be hard to see on camera, I think. So it looks very pale pink in the tub, but it has a gold and pink iridescence to it. It's right in the middle. It's far more subtle than the other one, and there's no chunky particles in it at all. So yeah, I like it as highlight and for all over the lid. And I've been using it as a base for other colours. Last but not least for Kiko is the... Stick eyeshadow in 01 and it is 
a pearly white and that's it there, I'll just blend it out there. and again I love this for inner corner especially if I'm using a pigment um, I can use that to adhere the pigment um, it's great oh and all three of those cream products they don't crease at all they stay all day and I'm going to have to really scrub these swatches off probably sticking with the whole iridescent theme I'm going to show you the duochrome shadows I've got from Topshop I think you'll have seen me use some of these on my looks on here and I've definitely showcased all of them on Instagram I absolutely love them I've written about them on my blog as well um, I have five and two are definitely still available which I am um, is which ones these two um this one is wax and wane and it is pinky purpley blue it's the darkest of them I'm gonna swatch these dry it's by there they are so high shine they feel similar in texture to the makeup geek foil shadows so that if they break a little bit you can normally just press them down and they'll go back together and then this is possibly my favourite one maybe I don't know this is shuffle the cards it's pinky gold and I can use this one to highlight with if I use it lightly and all of these just completely transform an eye look just dab them on top of anything on the lid and wow so that one's there I think these are £9 each, so they are cheaper than most other high quality duochromes. Um, this one is U-Turn and it's really unique, it's like ooh, a green pink or green purple, um, whereas greens are normally green brown. Um, yeah, I think it's really unique, but this one I can't see on the website anymore, which sucks. But if you go to your local top shop and you find it, I recommend you snap it up. It was part of the festival collection the summer before last I think um, but it was obviously really popular because they've since done um, cream blushes that are similar colours um, so yeah I think it was really popular that's a U-turn it's beautiful and then the other two I have are Holograph and Hallucination which I've had more recently, possibly within the last six months, I think. Hallucination is, um, well, the, but both of these are along the lines of the MAC Reflects. This one has a pink reflect, the horizontals one there. These are great for the inner corner. And then Holograph is a blue one. But then it does also have a pink sheen to it. It's blue and pink. That one is horizontal there. So I've been loving these the last month. They just completely transform an eye look. They can make one that looks, you know, all right, but when in the mill just looks spectacular. I love them. And I highly recommend you get your hands on them if you can. Um, I know, I think, well, I think ASOS and I think the John Lewis website might. But yeah, definitely worth finding almost at the end of makeup favorites sorry guys um i've just got three to show you the rest are upstairs but i've been loving the shiro it's the harry potter collection and i think it's called marauders mugwumps and muggles or maybe they're in a different order but it's mm and m um and there's 20 20 uh loose eyeshadows inspired by the characters um so i have to show you you're just as sane as I am, which is the Luna Love Good colour. And it's an iridescent purple eek. I'm totally running out of room, but it is there. It's an iridescent white with blue and purple in it, maybe. <laughs> I've been liking that for the inner corner and highlight. Then I've got the Dursley's colour, which is There's No Such Thing as Magic. And that is a matte um, for dusky pink. It is a great transition colour and I've been using that 
most days in the last month I'd say. And then another highlight colour to show you is Not Yet So Damaged and it's the Draco Malfoy colour and it is a very pale gold. Where am I going to put you? Put that at the side. Um, this one's really brightening. Also great on the inner corner. Lots of options this month for the inner corner. My last makeup related favourite are the brush guards. Um, I've had these for years, maybe four years, um, and I used them a lot when I got them and then I completely forgot about them, but then I saw somebody on Periscope using them for the first time and I was like, ooh, I want to find those again, so I dug them out. And basically what they are is, once you've washed your brushes, you put the guard over them so that they can dry and keep their shape, because quite often things splay out and lose their shape and this keeps their shape. Um, and also if you were shoving brushes in your kit and you were worried about them going out of shape, you can just put these on every brush in your kit. But they're great. So I've been using those every time I wash my brushes this month. I would like to get the largest size of them because I do have some really big powder brushes that, that don't fit. I've got just a few non-makeup favourites to talk about. Um, hiking. Um, I really like going for walks. I live in a really good area for walking. Um, but my walking boots have been destroyed. Um, they're completely holy on the inside and so I've not really been able to go for any really good muddy hikes um, for quite a while, um, but my parents got me um, some new walking boots as an early birthday present, so I had those at the beginning of January, and I've been loving those. They're not the most elegant of things, but neither am I, so that's alright. And another favourite has been The Tudors, the programme I've been watching on Netflix. I watched one or two when it was on TV, but like, I wasn't really into Jonathan and Reese Myers, in fact, I've always been infuriated that he's not ginger. Um, like, Henry VIII is ginger, was ginger, everybody knows that, like it's one of the biggest standouts about him, like everyone knows that he had six wives and that he was ginger. Like, it's just who he was. <laughs> not that I'm saying your hair colour defines you, but it really annoyed me that they didn't dye his hair. Um, but yeah, uh, I've stormed through that in the last month. My degree was archaeology and history, and um, the Tudors is one of my favourite areas of history. Um, I liked it a lot. It was a bit gratuitous at times, but um, I liked the characters, which I don't always like about a programme. I did really like them. Um, when Henry Cavill's character died, he was um, the Earl of Surrey or Suffolk? He's Suffolk. He was the Earl of Suffolk. When he died, I really cried. Um, and I, I like Henry Cavill now a lot more than I used to. Um, yeah, it just really touched me. I get, I've read a lot about the various wives. Um, I've read most of the, uh, what's she called? <sighs> oh, you know, the other Boleyn woman, the one who wrote those. I've read all her books about the wives and I've read some other things and seen other films about them and it just really upsets me. I really think, I really overthink it all. Um, and then I find the whole Reformation thing really fascinating and like how different would Britain be if he didn't want to divorce his first wife? Um, yeah, that whole thing really, really fascinates me. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't recommend it to everybody. There are some really blur scenes in it, <laughs> but it was good. And then, okay, my last favourite, I promise it's almost over, my last favourite is Periscope. Um, i definitely say Snapchat's my favourite social media form at the moment. I'm called RS Grey on there if you want to follow me. Before I go to bed at night I just catch up with everyone's snaps and I feel like because things are only on there for 24 hours, you really it makes you really want to check it every day and because you don't want to miss out. Um, and Periscope, in the same way, you can only watch things on there for 24 hours. So basically it's a live video feed. If there's not too many people viewing it, you can type comments to the person making the video. Um, if there's too many people in there, you can just watch. And there's just some really good makeup artists on there. 
um, and I've learnt a lot. Some of them are YouTube makeup artists and others are professionals um, who've been in the makeup industry for like 15 years. Yeah, they just have loads of great tips about your kit and um, just professionalism, uh, what to do when you've lost inspiration. Um, people quite often go through all their favourite brushes on there. How do I explain this? Because because there's only 24 hours to view it, I think fewer people will watch it than say a YouTube video where people can go back to it anytime they like. Oops, sorry. Um, and I just feel like people are more willing to give away really valuable information, um, like really good tips. And there's a little community of people who, who periscope almost every day and then the same people are in the comment sections and I don't know, you just, you definitely get to know somebody, well, you don't get to know them, but I feel like you know them better when you watch their snaps or periscope because it's unedited, you see all the mistakes and you get to see more of their personality and I just really like it. Um, there is that pressure, oh, I've got to watch it now. I don't think I'd take the plunge to actually make the videos on them myself, partially because I would have nobody watching them. <laughs> that would feel lonely, um, but I enjoy watching them a lot. If you're interested in Periscope, I'll leave the names of some of my favourite people on there, and if you like makeup, maybe you'd want to follow them. Okay, I think that was really long and rambly, so sorry. Ooh, by the way, if you like my makeup look, um, I have filmed it, so that'll be going up later on this week. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this video, or if you didn't. Um, I'll see you next time. Bye.